Okay, and we are live now. So happy lunch hour. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Stacy Feint, the Public Involvement Coordinator for the Fredericksburg Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, also called FAMPO for short. FAMPO is a regional organization that helps develop the transportation system for the Fredericksburg region. And FAMPO conducts studies and surveys to identify problems and works to get transportation projects funded and develops the long range transportation plan. We are here today to explain how you can influence transportation decisions before projects are constructed and work is started by participating in our current public comment period. And we'll tell you what you can provide comments on and how you can convey your thoughts to us. So stay tuned and stick around. But first, uh, why should you take the time to listen and provide a public comment? When the community voices their support or their concerns, we can make more informed decisions. In fact, public comment periods are intended to gather the community's input for decision makers to consider before they vote on whether to approve something. Today, we will talk about three different things you can review and comment on. First, there's a paratransit project that we would like to include in a document so that it can receive funding and move forward. Second, we will talk about transportation projects we want to include in the region's long range transportation plan. And finally, we will talk about a staff work program. Yes, you can weigh in on what regional transportation planning staff will work on and the amount of money that we plan to spend on our work. Uh, now let me introduce our two guests. We have FAMPO Transportation Planner Jordan Chandler and Clark Thomas, the Specialized Transportation Supervisor and Fleet Manager for the Rappahannock Area Services Board. Jordan, why don't you start off talking about the public comment opportunity for the Transportation Improvement Program and then after we'll have Clark explain the project and how it will benefit the community. Yeah, perfect, Stacey, and good morning, everyone. Um, today, we're going to start off by talking about the Transportation Improvement Program, also known as the TIP. This is a short-term planning document that includes projects that are programmed in the FAMPO region over the next four years. And the FAMPO region includes the city of Fredericksburg, Stafford, and Spotsylvania counties. The document contains various projects such as bike trails, sidewalks, roadways, intersection improvements, operational and safety improvements, and even public transportation. This document is basically a schedule of when these projects are um, supposed to receive funding. The reason that we have this document out for public comment is that the Department of Rail and Public Transportation, also known as DRPT, um, requested that we add this new project. And the DRPT is similar to VDOT, but it focuses on rail and public transportation. And they awarded some funding to the Rappahannock Area Community Services Board, also known as RACSB. And like Stacy mentioned today, we have Clark Thomas on with us to talk a little bit more about the project. So Clark, I'll turn it over to you. Present Rappahannock Area Community Services Board. And we, uh, filled out our F FTA Section 5310 grant where we would requested four nine-passenger vans. These vans will provide transportation to individuals with disabilities from their homes to our numerous programs, our day support programs and our cycle uh, rehabilitation program known as our Kenmore Club. RACSB is comprised of a variety of services and programs meeting the support needs of persons living in Planning District 16 that have mental health, substance abuse, and or developmental disability diagnoses. Carefully orchestrated transportation is an integral part of conducting our services and to linking people who need resources in the community in order to help build better lives. Uh, we provide services such as our specialized transportation program, our Rappahannock Adult Activities Program, which is a day support program, and we provide services. Also, we operate 15 residential uh, homes and apartments uh, for individuals there, and then we also have the Kenmore Club. The specialized transportation program has seven fixed routes, uh, comprised of each 
van carries approximately uh, seven to nine individuals and up to three wheelchairs. Uh, the, we have about 60 individuals participating in that program. Uh, due to COVID, uh, we had to halt that transportation program March 16th of 2020. <clears throat> but we did not stop providing transportation at that time. We uh, switched our resources and adjusted our programming where instead of us going uh, and bringing people to our day support, we took our day support to the individuals. <clears throat> this was a, a big uh, switch and a lar large process that we undertook, but we, we did it and we are continuing to do it. And the vehicles that we have been requested, that have been requested in this grant will go along greatly to assist this process. Uh, many of the individuals that we provide transportation to cannot get other transportation such as freight transit, uh, cabs or anything like that. They require specialized uh, drivers to take care of their needs, to uh, give them the transportation to get to their day support programs. Once at day support, we, we uh, are very interested in getting individuals into the community, access to parks, YMCA, shopping, doctor's appointments, and many other things like that that are just almost too numerous to mention. You name it, our day support program and our residential program does it. Uh, with that, uh, we've traveled a, lo a lot of miles. I think our total miles last year and during a COVID year was 513,000 miles, which uh, puts a lot of stress on the vehicle fleet we have. We approximately have about 90. Not all of them have been, have been uh, purchased through the ERPT grant, but uh, a good number of those have. If you have any questions for me, or uh, I'd be glad to take them. I hope I covered everything that you would like, but please let me know what, what I can do for you. Thanks, Clark. I will give those who are watching, we have three people watching live right now. If anyone has any questions, you can go ahead and type them out in the chat. We'll give you just about a minute here to do that. And so why they're typing, so you said that uh, RACSB has 90 vehicles in their fleet, is that right? Yes, and not all of them are through DRPT, but yeah, we have a large fleet here. Wow, I did not know that, that's great. Yeah. Um, well, we do a lot of, uh, we do a lot of different programs. We have employees, 600 employees here. Oh, so wow. it's a, it, it, we provide a lot of services. That's great. So no questions coming in yet, but um, why we're giving it another few minutes. Um, so the audience might be wondering what's the best way to provide feedback on these proposed additions. Um, one of the great ways is to show your support. Not all public feedback is meant to change or edit or fix transportation plans. You can express support in writing. Let me check the mic real quick. Okay. <laughs> you can express uh, support in writing via text on social media or by phone call. Um, you can also put it in the comment section below right here under the video. Um, you'll see a link to learn more. I'll add that in the comment section. Um, so you can see the page that we have pulled up right here. Uh, there's also a nice video resource that you can watch to learn more about um, the changes um, and the funding for RACSB's paratransit project. Um, and you can also just reply in the comment section, but please do note that you want your comment to be shared with decision makers. And if you need to reach us by phone, you can call 540-642-642. One, two, three, five, and you can record, or this will be recorded, so you can go back and listen to all that. Um, and again, I'll put it in the chat, all the different ways that you can contact us to voice your support or ask any other questions. And thanks, thanks for joining us today, Clark. We'll let you sign off now. Jordan and I will stay on for a bit longer to tell everyone about two more comment periods. That you're doing for us. RACSB is a big, big player here in the community to help individuals with disabilities. Uh, many, many of our folks 
cannot get out and do things without this valuable transportation program that, that you're involved with. We uh, appreciate all the support that you give us. And again, thank you very much for inviting me. Have a good day. Thanks, Clark. Thank yep. you. Okay, Jordan. Uh, and if the audience sees me looking back and forth, I've got a couple different screens going on. Um, so Jordan, I'll turn it back to you to talk about the LRTP public comment. Perfect. Thanks, Stacy. So the next document that we're going to talk about is the Long Range Transportation Plan, or also as Stacy called it, the LRTP. And so this is a long term planning document, whereas the tip which we just talked about is short term. So this document is planning um, near and far all the way to the year 2045. And currently this project is in the public comment period because we are adding proposed project or adding projects that have received proposed funding from the state and the state program is called smart scale and so now that these projects are scheduled to receive funding they need to be included in our long-range plan in order to continue moving forward and progress and without these amendments it would kind of just be stuck um, in the interim until we get everything sorted out and so Stacy has the documents pulled up and um, can click through the website mm -hmm. as she goes through. But um, all the projects that are highlighted in green as she pulls that up are the proposed smart scale projects that are going to receive funding. And if you're looking to find out a little bit more about those projects, you can look at the description column, but then also all the way on the right side, there's an additional information column that says a little bit more about each project. And then additionally, there's a little, a few other modifications to the list. Um, and that's just to keep the list up to date from the last amendment and add anything new that needs to be added. And again, those are in purple. So I'll turn it over to Stacy. Great, thanks. I'm just posting a few contacts in the chat. There we go. We still have two people tuning in, so thank you. Um, real quick, I'll go back and show you that uh, I know that that spreadsheet was hard to see on your screens, but we do have on our website some more information. You can actually click on and view the PDF on a larger screen, and we have a video resource that you can watch that'll walk you through the document. So then let's move on. Um, so Jordan, thanks for the summary. And um, as I said, we have a video that walks you through. We know it can be a little confusing, so that should be helpful. I'll leave a link to this webpage that you're looking at in the comments below. Um, so why might you wanna comment on this document? Well, perhaps you wanna express support or concern for a project, or perhaps you wanna convey whether you think we are spending money on the right types of projects, so different project modes such as bike and pedestrian and public transit and road projects. And in the comment section, you'll also see a link to learn more, as I said, on our website here, and I've put our contact information down there. You can even comment right here on Facebook, just reply in the comment section and note that you want your comment to be shared with decision makers. And if you need to reach us by phone, that phone number is also in the comment section. I'll pause now for audience questions. We'll give it about a minute. Regrouping here. Okay, no questions, Jordan. So let me real quick, as I said, I'm going to enter the website in the comments before I forget. Okay, that's the link to view all these documents and watch the video resources. Um, so Jordan, why don't we move on to the Unified Planning Work Program changes? Yeah, thanks, Stacy. So the last document that we have out um, right now is the Unified Working Unified Planning Work Program, also known as the UPWP. We have lots of acronyms for everything here. Um, and this is, document is created every year and contains all the activities that FAMPO staff, like Stacy and myself, will be working on to accomplish over the next year. And it also includes funding sources and funding amounts of how we're gonna accomplish this work. And so um, Stacy's looking at that um, on the web page, and then she can open the 
specific parts of it and we'll scroll through um, to the table of contents just to show the basic overview of what's included in this document. And so section one provides an overview of our organization, how this plan was developed, our accomplishments. Oh, stop. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, our accomplishments over the last fiscal year, um, the staffing levels and proposed funding. Section two reviews our planning priorities and provides a basic overview of activities that staff will conduct. Section three highlights um, studies that are occurring in the region and the on-call on consultants that we're working with and the specialists. Um, section four spells out the specific tasks that are being proposed to be accomplished by the staff. Um, so sections 1.1 and 1.2 um, are similar to things that we've presented today, like long and short range planning. The TIP and the LRTP are perfect examples of things that we'll have to do in this next coming year. Um, section 4.4 looks at related community engagement and public participation. Section 4.5 looks at transportation demand management um, and their related activities. And TDM also provides alternatives to single occupancy vehicles, which is one person riding in a car to get to a certain destination. Uh, 4.6 relates to staff assistance with um, public transit, and that's um, working with Fred Regional Transit and other providers. 4.7 is special projects, um, including studies and one-off tasks that might occur throughout the year. Um, 4.9 is contingency, and section five breaks out the funding by program activity. And so now I'll pass it over to Stacy to give an example of how to provide, or what, what type of feedback we're looking for, you can ask. Thanks, Jordan, for that. Let me go back to the main page. Um, so we're happy to take any questions from the audience at this point. You can go ahead and put those in the comment section and we'll discuss any comments you have. Um, if you're watching a recording of this, you can also leave comments and we'll be following up with you on those. Um, so you'll also note that there is a link to what you can see on your screen in the comment section below. Um, there's a video resource right here you can see on your screen that walks you through the document in detail and provides you with some ideas on what you might want to comment about. Um, so I think that's probably what we have on our agenda. Yeah, it is. Um, Jordan, any other thoughts why people take a second to provide any comments? I just want to reiterate, like Stacy did at the beginning, that these decisions or comments and feedback that we get are taken seriously and that we evaluate them and look at them and um, when necessary, we incorporate them to the documents and how we do our work. So I think it's really important that everyone just take a minute um, and find something that might be something that you're really interested in to provide a comment on or support or give feedback. So I just reiterate that. Right. And even if you attempt to review these and you're like, this is way too confusing, that's also valuable feedback to provide to us so that we can follow up and um, clear up these documents in the future, um, streamline them so they make more sense to the public if that's a concern you have. Um, thank you for watching and we look forward to having some of your public comments come in. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks. Bye.